Hello and welcome. Uh, we finally got to the business end of these videos and although this may very well be the shortest of my um, review videos, it will probably be the most important for many of you. I've broken down what I'm going to say into a few main main points. Uh, the idea is to give you an, uh, an update on my experience and my rating of the Genki GK1000. So first of all, from an ease of use uh, or ergonomics point of view, if you like, I found that it's a very easy device to use. Basically, there's no technical skill involved whatsoever. Just take it out the box, plug it in and you're off. It does come with some charge. However, you'll see some from, from the figures that I show in a moment that it probably makes more sense to charge it fully before you use it. Which brings me to the point that the accuracy of the readouts, it appears to me they're not always very good. So the watt usage, I'm pretty confident that's right. And the watts that come in on the charge, that looks, looks pretty accurate. But the device also gives you a readout of hours remaining in charge at the current use and hours it will take to charge at the current input and capacity. And I found that those estimates aren't that great and quite frankly neither is uh, the percentage capacity available. I'm not sure that those are very good. How, however, uh, it gives you an idea I guess, just don't um, bet, the, bet the farm on it as they say. Other than that, it looks good. In terms of charging, it, it charges at a rate of around about just slightly under 120 watts, uh, it seems to pull out of the, the, the charge setup. There's a, there's a, uh, a step down uh, transformer and uh, rectifier that gives a DC current from the block of about uh, 5 amps. And it seems to, to pull about 115 to 117 watts at a, at a time. And it charges fairly quickly, probably a little quicker than it shows. On, on the time and certainly from a load shedding point of view that really hasn't been much of a problem. In terms of the load shedding experience I've done a number of measurements which will give you an idea of how it's run. I think I've got four sets of data from four different uh, load shedding periods showing how much the capacity showed before and after how long the load shedding was for, and uh, you've already seen the load that I put on uh, for the, in the earlier videos, but it boils down to around about 170 watts at a time. It's certainly a massive improvement. I mean, we, we live again, as I'd like to say. It's, it's, I think it's probably good, good for your mental health, and it feels like, you know, we can do normal things in the evenings and when uh, Eskim decide to deprive us deprive us of their power and in terms of the objectives that I set up front in the first video it certainly easily sustains them and that was to remind you uh, running for four hours under load shedding circumstances and we we've managed to do that with power to spare charging between the load shedding times so those in South Africa will know we we typically get two and a half hours of load shed time, i.e. no power. And then usually there's a few hours in between that and the next one. And worst case we've had is three of those a day, uh, typically four or so hours in between. And it certainly recharges in the time in between. So we've always been able to recover the device purely off the wall. I do intend to put in solar panels to charge it because I think that's just a cleaner way of running. Um, but I haven't done so yet. So in terms of running between charging between load shedding, that's absolutely no problem. The one thing I would have quite liked is to use it like a UPS, an un uninterruptible power supply. In other words, to have the device plugged into the wall and have the load coming out of the device. Uh, that would require two things. It would require that um, the, the power pack can both discharge power and charge at the same time. And secondly, that the amount that's getting used by the load is taken directly from the from the main supply. One wouldn't want to be depleting the battery every time because you're just cutting into the cycles of the rechargeability. 
So I found that you can you can actually uh, run power off it and charge at the same time. That appears to, to, to function correctly. I've got to say I haven't done any rigorous testing, but all indications are that it is charging and, and um, giving power out. The problem is that, as you've probably already picked up, with a maximum charge rate of about 115 to 117 watts, and my drawing 170 watts, clearly I'm drawing more than I'm putting in which means that it's not really sustainable to run it like that for any particular length of time. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't use it as a UPS if that was my main, main objective. That means there's a switching process. So what I do is I have uh, all my load plugged into one extension lead. And when the power goes out, we switch it across to the Jenki. And when the power comes back at a suitable moment, because it does take a few minutes, we switch it back to the to the mains power. The, the fact that it takes a few minutes is predominantly because the DSTV device has to reboot. So two or three or four minutes, the power is available immediately, you switch over, which doesn't really have much effect on lights and TVs and soundbars, but it does affect the DSTV. So there, it's, there could be a slight irritation there, I guess, if that was important to you. And in fact, if that's what you really want it for, then I think this is not the device for you because the charge rate's just too low. Finally, I want to mention from a from a, a load, load shedding use point of view, uh, there is a fan that runs occasionally. So typically for us, it runs about once every 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, for about three minutes maybe. Um, it's not a it's not a terrible noise. The fan it's a it's it, in terms of how as far as fans go, it's a fairly uh, warm and comfortable noise, but it does add a bit of background noise to the room. And I guess if you that irritates you easily, then you need to take that into account. Although I I, I must say, looking at other write ups, that seems to be a fairly common issue. And I'm guessing because of the nature of the device that there's not much you can do about it because it's it's always going to be a problem. Then the other thing that I do want to say is that if, if you if you're wanting uh, technical support, there's not a huge amount of technical support available uh, on the Genki. I, I did get hold of the manufacturers, uh, which is a, a Shanghai company. I'll list the URL uh, in the comments and I emailed them a couple of times I did get some responses but they're not particularly uh, uh, let's say verbal so I did get confirmation that there is protection for the battery suitable protection for the battery so that you cannot deplete it too far to damage it so as I said earlier you, you can't take a lithium down lithium iron based battery down to more than um, say 80% depth of charge or, or leaving about 20% or more and they say that that's in place and that's that's certainly reassuring so although having said that these devices are pretty simple they have a they have a series of internally they have a series of uh, lithium batteries which come in standard forms this one as I said is a 21700 there's a, there'll be a bunch of them and they will be charged through a, a power management system, uh, which is, again, fairly straightforward. And it'll be pulled out through an inverter, which is fairly straightforward. So there's not a lot to go wrong, actually. Probably the thing most likely to go wrong, if anything goes wrong, is the fans. So I don't think that the technical support is going to be in high demand for a device like this. And the build quality certainly looks good but I'm not sure where you'd get it from if you did need it. Me personally, I think I'd try taking the thing apart. So bottom line for me, I think buying this has been a success. And certainly from my point of view, uh, I have no second thoughts. I, I haven't been uh, subsidized or in any way uh, remunerated for doing this review. It's purely a personal uh, decision. And so from a rating point of view, I'll put them up, but I rate cost as, as essential, is essentially the winning factor because looking at any other uh, item, I never found another one that comes out at, at a better price per, per kilowatt hour or per watt, per watt hour, let's say. Build quality is pretty good. Uh, ease of use is pretty good. 
um, and working as a power supply for load shedding, it definitely hits all my targets. I would say that, it, you know, there's always room for improvement, so I'm not going to give it maximum points, but no real complaints from me. Charging, uh, slightly disappointed that it didn't, it wouldn't charge at a faster rate, although I must say, the manufacturers indicate that if you charge with the solar, solar panels and from the wall, it'll charge at twice the rate. The trouble with that is that that's fine during the day, but load, load shedding at night, which is when I really want to use the device, uh, we wouldn't have solar charging anyway. So using as a UPS, for example, is out of the question. The switch over, uh, that's okay. I'm going to mark it fairly low because it, it doesn't have an automatic ability to switch over, which some of them I know do, um, but not the worst mark. And then finally, technical support also, I'm going to mark pretty low, uh, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't choose another product as a result of that being bad. It's probably bad for most products in our country. So I hope this has been useful for you, and uh, I hope that you'll uh, give me a thumbs up and recommend this review to others. In the meantime, cheers, thanks a lot, and good luck.